everybody, I am Allie, and this is my YNR chat vlog for Sunday, October 18th. And this has been the best week in YNR in so long. It actually makes me excited to talk about the show. Um, the storylines are finally coming back into the light. Um, and let me tell you, I think that we needed some levity this week after having been put through the ringer for the last two or three weeks. Um, Lily's quarantine is over. Kane and Lily are practically back together now. Um, the Tyrone painting was recovered. Um, Sharon has a new home. Ashley and Victor are done. Um, Nikki and Victor are um, kind of on the road to a new hope. Uh, we had some Scrabble fun <laughs> this week. And of course we had some farm fun. So it's all in all been a really awesome week. Um, I hope that you guys feel the same way and that you're enjoying the show. First I want to start off with talking about the farm festival because that was the most fun that we've had on the show in ages. Bravo to whoever came up with that idea because I really, really enjoyed it. Um, Murphy, he organized the whole thing, this wonderful farm uh, activity. Catherine was judging the apple pie contest, um, <laughs> and there was apparently a brisket contest, too. Um, I loved Nick and Michael, um, and, and Phyllis and Laura. Like, there was so much fun stuff going on with those four. Um, it was so cute, <laughs> the way that um, Nick and Michael came, um, came uh, behind the two girls with these little tiny stuffies. Uh, meanwhile, like the girls had won these huge prizes, and Michael and uh, Nick are looking at the prizes they won that are tiny, and they're like, Meh. <laughs> so cute. Um, I enjoyed also watching Nick step in the cow poop. Uh, that was so great. There was just so much um, happiness this week, so much fun, um, frivolity, and I enjoyed it. Um, I'm happy to see the Fab Four back together, Phyllis and Nick and uh, Michael and Lauren. They're so much fun, um, and it was, it was really cool to see them back together again. So, to new beginnings. Well, Ashley and Victor's marriage is over just about as quickly as it began. Um, Ashley is back. She is back on top of her game, um, and she's ready to take Victor to the cleaners. Um, never mind that he just almost died. Ashley is ready to get what's coming to her for her and her kids and her pain and, and suffering, I suppose, at the hands of this man. Um, let me tell you, though, Victor, uh, they did a fake out of Victor's death this week. I think it was on Wednesday and it was intense. All of a sudden it was, it was just this, it was a, a preview from Adam's mind showing Victor dying. And like, you know, I mean, there's always that moment where you never know what, what the show's going to do. I mean, Victor could die. And let me tell you, my heart stopped when the doctor looked over at, at Nick and Victoria and said he's gone. I mean, I was, I was absolutely speechless. And I'm like, this is not happening. This is not happening. Uh, but no, it was not happening. Um, it was, it was a very, a very uh, close call though for me. I don't know what I would do if Victor died. Oh, but um, as Ashley said, Victor is now in for the second fight of his life. He's got a lot of, uh, a lot of work coming his way. Um, Cause there's, there's really no way that Victor is going to roll over and just let Ashley take his home that he's lived in forever all his life. Um, Victor is thinking in his mind that he's going to go back to the ranch and he's going to have nurse Nikki take care of him. Um, and I don't know, it's, it's not going to go down that way. I have a feeling that we're going to see Victor and Nikki and Ashley all living at the ranch and battling it out. So speaking of new living situations, Sharon is now living at Brad's house. Yay! I love it. I'm really happy about this. And Sharon is doing so well. I'm very, very proud of her. Um, she's getting back on her feet. She's discovering her independence. Um, she's not leaning on Nick. She's letting him have his life with Phyllis. She's having fun. It was so cute with her and her little dance party amongst all of the boxes in the house as she's unpacking. She has a little dance party. Um, 
and she's just overall being really positive. Um, Jack is being really, really helpful to her. I loved the interactions between Sharon and Jack this week. There was so much, I think, that needed to be said between those two. Um, so Jack is helping her out, and I really like them as friends. I was never too passionate about Jack and Sharon as a couple, but I really like them being good friends. Um, the only danger point for Sharon now is her newfound connection to Adam, and I don't even know how Adam can look her in the face. What he's done is unforgivable. You can tell now that they're trying to, to you know, have him have a, a moment of needing forgiveness, but as far as I'm concerned, it's unforgivable. Um, and, and frankly, Adam is just, there's no redeeming quality for him for me. He's totally unattractive. I'm sorry. It's just me. I'm not attracted to Adam. And I don't know. I, I liked the old Adam. I found myself so much missing the old actor that played him lately because even though the old Adam, it was like he was a villain, but he was still had this sexy, naughty quality to him. So I, I don't know. I thought he was hot, so I was able to forgive him easier. But new Adam is just not cute to me anyway. I don't know. Does anybody out there, do any of you guys actually find that guy attractive, the guy who plays Adam? Take take away all of the Adam nonsense. Do you find that, that actor, Michael Mullaney, something like that, do you find him attractive? It's okay. You can tell me. Um, I, it's a safe space here. You can't help who you like, but um, let me know. If anybody out there finds him attractive, come forward. We're going to be seeing a lot more of him uh, now in the halls of Newman, now that Victor has decided to give him a job as junior vice president. Honestly, if I were Nick, I would have given him a job cleaning toilets, um, but that's not what happened. And, of course, first day on the job, Adam turns Nick and Victoria in to the SEC. Let the games begin. So the WTF moment of the week this week was the emergence of the Patty Williams lookalike. What's up with that? <laughs> I'm dying to know. Um, is it the real Mary Jane Benson? Is it possible that it was um, that there was a, a duplicate out there all along and that there is actually a woman named Mary Jane Benson? Or is it possible that this woman is the person who's holding the sword of Damocles over Deacon's head? Is she that mystery woman? I don't know, but I can't wait to find out the twist. There were lots of twists with the Tyrone storyline this week. Um, Deacon switched the painting on Gloria, and then Daniel switched the painting on t on Deacon. So <laughs> there was a lot of stuff going on with that storyline this week. Um, the the moment of the week was when Gloria unrolled uh, her version of the painting, and it was the clown face with "You Lose" printed right over the top of it. That was the priceless, priceless moment of the week. I enjoyed that more than I can even tell you. Um, I'm all in all really glad that everything worked out with the Tyrone, with the painting. Um, I'm glad that that whole storyline is over. It was getting a little dragged out for me. So I'm glad it's over and more importantly I'm glad that Daniel and Amber are back together. Ooh, but who can we pair Deacon with? Because for a moment when he and Phyllis were at the bar, before Phyllis smacked him in the face, I thought, hmm, Phyllis and Deacon? I don't know. We have to find a good mate for Deacon because we have to keep him on the show. I need him. Well, my second favorite scenes of the week this week, next to the farm fun, were Billy and Mac and Chloe and Chance. It was so much fun watching um, Billy and Chloe just going at each other while Mac and Chance are standing in the background like, huh. Uh, <laughs> it was hilarious. Um, I really especially loved Chloe's comment about Chance's big hands. Yeah, that needed to happen. I, that was just, that, that, that struck right through my soul. I really enjoyed it. Um, the Scrabble challenge was so fun between the two couples. Um, I laughed out loud the entire time, and when Chance spelled the word virgin on the board, I... I almost could not contain myself. I was screaming and howling at my screen. Um, it was so awkward, but Chance 
turned it. Like Billy had a chance to really rip into Chance, but Chance turned it and he told Billy off. He was like, you know what? I may be a virgin, but what what kind of sexual experiences have you had, Billy? You just throw girls away and how special is that? He really told Billy off it was, and, and not only that, but he in it really stuck up for Chloe. Um, he, he was just really really awesome this week. So kudos to Chance. Um, gosh, and I just keep wondering, why can't Billy be happy with Mac? You know, I think that I think that Mac is a cool character. I don't think that we've been able to see a lot from her that we could, but she balances him out and he needs that. Like, I love Billy and Chloe's chemistry. I really do. But I also think that they're too much alike to be together. Like, I just think that a relationship needs balance. Otherwise, it's too explosive. And that's kind of what you would get with a chilly um, relationship. But we all know <laughs> that Billy and Chloe are going to hook up soon. Um, and it will be hot. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Um, but all in all, I think that Billy should be happy that Chloe is actually dating a nice guy, um, considering that Chance is spending time around his daughter, Delia. Um, and not to mention the fact that Chloe Chloe could do a whole lot worse on the rebound. Okay, well those are my thoughts about the show. I hope you guys are loving it and that you had a lot of fun this week. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to leave a comment. I can't wait to read what you guys are thinking. And you can go to my website if you would like to at buttonhead.org. So have a wonderful week and I'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye!